Exactly. The widespread campaign in education. Oh, it's all right to talk about education, Mr. Wyatt. But we educators can't do anything until the public is sufficiently aroused. Let me show you something. In 1930, the records on marijuana in the Washington office of the narcotics division scarcely filled a small folder like this. Today, You have entered Club Virtual. Please check your reality at the door. And be sure you get a receipt. We're not going to have a repeat of last time. Some one, no names, walked off with Jordy's reality. The poor bastard found himself on a fruit truck on the way to Barstow. Once again, we continue in our vain attempts to impose culture with a capital K upon the sweaty masses. I am your extinguished host, the professor. Club Virtual is brought to you once again by the usual confederacy of dunces who have recently been given above ground titles in the lame hope of acquiring respectable grant money. Let's have some applause for Mr. Douglas Javelin, now known as Creative Consultant. <laughs> Mr. Jeff Morris, our official musical director and producer. Mr. Anthony Bondi, our artistic coordinator and video mixer. And my own humble title, Reich's Marshal of the Empire of a Thousand Savage Tongues. And now a few announcements. An exhibition of local artists on the theme of The Chair opened this past Saturday at the Contemporary Gallery on Maryland Parkway and was a smashing success despite a minor glitch, which was, of course, the eagerly awaited execution of Vegas World impresario Bob Stupak in a neon-decorated electric chair. While local artists Charles Morgan and Hans Freeland had no difficulty in luring the Stupak into the chair with a kielbasa sausage, the beast quickly became agitated by the flash bulbs of the press and was in no mood to be strapped in. Better luck next time, fellows. The following Friday, after the third Sunday, here at the cafe in the Yukio Mishima room, there will be a special seminar on spontaneous combustion, led by Dr. Guy Madison. I'm sure we've all been in that embarrassing situation where the circumstances required us to burst into flames, but to our chagrin, we just couldn't do it. Now you and your loved ones can learn the proper techniques. Of course, prepayment for the seminar is requested. And our sympathies and condolences to Sheriff Junk Moran and the Las Vagrants Metropolitan Police Department, who were eliminated in the second round of the Beat the Detainee Senseless competition in Los Angeles. Let's hope next year's team has that finely honed brutality that we've come to know and love. And now, without further delay, our first little bit of the evening, let's have some polite applause for Mr. Jason Quiggle. For anything. Ready for some games. Another poem about abuse. Saw to me, saw to you, saw a dummy. Saw a dummy, he liked to hurt others too. This is fucking miserable, mapping out the scars inside, outside. From here to there, it gets worse from here over there. A guy, an angel, told me his suffering about his sister's bobbing head and yanked ponytail. The angel's mom beat the angel's dad with a shoe. That was a long time ago. For Christmas this year, the angel gave his sister a dildo. I don't know why, so I'll try and let it out easy. Hidden behind a religion, a group of unfollowed rules, he slapped me right hand. 
banded, my left ear still hurts. When I get migraines, the pain swallows my head and shoots through that ear. I still listen though, even if it is a sin to be. Imagine your small child, porcelain head, filled with seawater and sneezes. Think of it puddled and broken. How do you treat your dog? How do you treat your child? I saw everything. I was told to be quiet and I was, damn it, and I watched you. I could have killed you in a childish way while you slept. Instead, I let you kill me slower than I ever would have done you. And when I escaped you, I found you in my dreams and my newly brutal hands, my facial expressions, my verbal nuances, and my facial hair. I saw you. I should have killed you in a childish way. I should kill you all, the ones who raped their sons and daughters and tortured them as their own flesh. Quiet, whisper. I know my place under your hand. So now I will find my place above your wretchedness. This next one is called In. And it's written by me and Sky and Danielle. <laughs> Spreading flesh, the holy land, I seek salvation. Will she believe? Will she drink my milk, my runny guilt, fuck my passion all asunder? Push pressure inside fleshy more and more. God, my God, I found it in. The spreading of insecurities, the flesh of life, scrawl your damaged rules on my thighs with inked teeth of bastards' mouths. All these tragedies while I eat your mistakes with the hunger of a broken beast in. Bless me with your violent fist. Surprise me with your quiet gifts. In. Flushing loudly, clutching inside me. Violence soothes teeth to flesh into the brain. Vicious madness. Made pleasure. I open my eyes. Smile. Walk away. In. that I'm still working on. What demon put me in this bag of flesh? What sweaty curse was cast upon my skin? Where do I go for the end of my endings? And when my body burns from my soul trying to get out, my physical self, get out and touch your soul. There's a bit of spirit in my semen, a bit of sin in my spittle, and some of God in my fingers. Someday my genitals will bleed like the roses in my dreams. This is called solid. Her shadows are solid and so is my cops. Whatever I thought my fingers did to her, I was wrong. It's our mouths together that get to her. My cat likes her too. They French kiss each other. I watch them lick each other's tongues. It's feline. Feminine turns me off. My hand, her hand, my fingers, her fingers together between her legs. It's me, her working together on her genitals. Repeat, repeat, keep the rhythm where it's going. Thank you. from another century. Jaws that bite. 
bite the claws that catch. Beware the juju bird and shun the frumious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time the man on slow he sought. He rested by the tum tum tree and stood a while in thought. And as an uffish thought he stood, the jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffling through the telgy wood and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through, the warple blade went snicker snack. He left it dead, and with its head he went galumphing back. And hast thou slain the jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. Oh, fragile day, kalu kale, he chortled in his joy. Twas brillig at the slithy toes, did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsies were the boar birds, and the mole morass on grave. Lewis Carroll, who liked little girls. Anyone wishing to uh, put themselves under the pin, so to speak, and read any poets out there, or even scribblers, simply speak to me and I will see to it that you will get a nice slot here on stage. And now, two of the distinguished members of the Black Orchestra, Mr. Brian Weiss and Mr. Jim Singer,
have some applause as a black orchestra up here. Garrett on Garrett saxophone. On. Thank you, Garrett. And now I've just been handed another hollow announcement. The smell has got me going. Touch of her skin. At 10 o'clock tonight, for those of you with a stomach for it, we will have body piercing here at the Cub Virtual. $20 shoulders and above, $25 below the shoulders, 10 o'clock, stick around and get pierced. Also, this is the Neural Net Show, Mr. K.D. Matheson back there in the black in the baseball cap is Neural Netting for anyone who wishes to get wired. Right now, we're going to have a little psycho babble from a man who needs no introduction. Actually, he does need an introduction, but we won't say to who. Please welcome Jordy. Tell me. 
come here now. The ignorant ones filled with empty words, trapped in a flickering mind, they mean nothing. With empty words and blind eyes, they come here now, angry with life's lack of motivation, trapped in thought, receiving insanity. You teach me this, nothing but spitting on humanity, you're a vampire, he says. Sucking dry the choking, I thrive on this. The city of conflict and higher pain that she calls her lover. In my mind, I live and die, will she be there crying for nobody? Suicide is this beauty splitting flesh, and she lies now, telling me of life, while crying for nobody, and I am her demon in betrayal of words, and with empty minds they come here now, to steal with the healing hand, it hurts this way about hate, and I live with this, away from life's promises, is the end splits flesh, and the blood soothes my heart.
performance of miracle plays in which the leading actor is translated to heaven. In this country, the gallows is chiefly remarkable for the number of persons who escape it. Garter, noun, an elastic band intended to keep a woman from coming out of her stockings and desolating the country. Uh, Gnostics, noun, a sect of philosophers who tried to engineer a fusion between the early Christian, Christians and Platonists. The former would not go into the caucus and promise and failed greatly to the chagrin of the fusion managers. Gout, noun, a physician's name for the rheumatism of a rich patient. Grave, noun, a place in which the dead are laid to await the coming of the medical student. Guillotine, noun, a machine which makes a Frenchman shrug his shoulders with good reason. Noun, an agreeable sensation arising from contemplating the misery of another. Ooh, oh, touch it. Yeah. Yeah. your finger. Hatred, noun, a sentiment appropriate to the occasion of another's superiority. Heathen, noun, a benighted creature who has the folly to worship something that he can see and feel. Heaven, noun, a place where the wicked cease from troubling you with talk of their personal affairs and the good listen with attention while you expound your own. <laughs> History, noun, an account, mostly false, of events mostly unimportant, which are brought about by rulers, mostly knaves, and soldiers, mostly fools. Homicide, noun, the slaying of one human being by another. There are four kinds of homicide, felonious, excusable, justifiable, and praiseworthy, but it makes no great difference to the person slain whether he fell by one kind or another. The classification is for the advantage of lawyers. Hospitality, noun, the virtue which induces us to feed and lodge certain persons who are not in need of food and lodging. Husband, noun, one who, having dined, is charged with the care of the plate. Hypocrite, noun, one who, professing virtues that he does not respect, secures the advantage of seeming to be what he despises. Imagination, noun, a warehouse of facts with poet and liar in joint ownership. Immigrant, noun, an unenlightened person who thinks one country better than another. Immodest, adjective, having a strong sense of one's own merit, coupled with a feeble conception of worth in others. Impentinence, a state of mind intermediate in point of time between baby, sin and punishment. Impunity, noun. Wealth. Impunity. Wealth. 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 Oh. Injury, noun, an offense next in degree of enormity to a slight. Ingrate, noun, one who receives a benefit from another or is otherwise an object of charity. Ink, noun, a villainous compound of tenogal out of iron, gum, arabic, and water, chiefly used to facilitate the infection of idiocy and promote intellectual crime. 
The properties of ink are peculiar and contradictory. It may be used to make reputations and to make them, to blacken them, and to make them white, but it is most generally and acceptably employed as a mortar to bind together the stones of an edifice of fame, and as a whitewash to conceal afterward the rascal quality of the material. There are men called journalists who have established ink baths, which some persons pay money to get into, others to get out of. Not infrequently it occurs that a person who has paid to get in pays twice as much to get out. Well, enough of that nonsense. And now we have a very special event, a band by the name of Without Brown Vinyl. Let's have some applause, please. Sure.
bled with the wind. The disfigured wind brought life to him. From wherever a breath might stir. From stars our bulging sea. When it passes, so will he. In that last still moment at death, the wind will rattle out of me. As in all Everything 
Pope's game. The monster which destroys the innocence and naivety of young virgin hearts full of optimism and energy, leaving behind a corrupt, cynical, old, brave, pessimistic, and dead shell dried up and cold. Yet it burns whoever dared to touch it, and yearns to reach out to those without care, as it pounds for those that hate it. Perhaps love is a self destructive mechanism which activates itself when life fills every cell in the body with opiates that transcend ecstasy and reach utopia for that short period of time. This time flies like an airplane crash, quick man between your legs and goodbye. A completely volunteer mutual, sunny case, whisper of love, transmits itself to both of you in daydream. They awake in the midst of a battlefield, guns drawn on each other. The tears are held back as both triggers are pulled.
The force that through the green fuse drives the flower, drives my green age. That blasts the roots of trees is my destroyer. And I am dumb to tell the crooked rose, my youth is bent by the same wintry fever. The force that drives the water through the rocks, drives my red blood. That dries the mouthing streams, turns mine to wax. And I am dumb to mouth unto my veins, how at the mountain spring the same mouth sucks. The hand that whirls the water in the pool stirs the quicksand that ropes the blowing wind to hauls my shroud sail. And I am dumb to tell the hanging man how my plays made the hangman's line. The lips of time leach to the fountainhead. Love drips and gathers, but the fallen blood shall calm her sores. And I am dumb to tell the weather's wind Time has ticked a heaven round the stars. And I am dumb to tell the lover's tomb how at my sheet goes the same crooked worm. And now, oh Chris, Chris, are you ready, sir? A recitation by the man in black.
Matheson. Everything tonight was done by my Tony provided the wire. Anyone who wants to be wired, by the way, I've got wire back there. Just go ahead and grab some. It's fun. <laughs> who do we have up next? Is Lamel still here? Just keep going till it's over. Can I get the first? Greg, is Lamel still here? We haven't had Lamel in. Ooh, Michael Prescott. Michael Prescott's here. Michael Prescott is virtual radio's biggest fan. Michael records all the shows, so Michael's our best friend. We all love Michael. Listen to virtual radio, midnight, Sunday. Can't even be you bastards. One last plug. This weekend, Saturday, we've got the Junkie Nuts playing here. Never, never, never bite a married woman in the thigh. Because it's going to leave a mark. And sooner or later, it's going to catch your husband's eye. And he's going to say, Oh my, somebody bit you in the thigh. And then he's going to think about it for a minute. And then he's going to say, who's the guy? And she's going to try real hard not to tell him. She's really going to try. But he's going to pry and pry and pry. 